You know, Chuck, uh, I don't think it was an accident that the Lord had you name the, the ministry Glory of Zion. And I know that we've gone through, I would suspect, in our lifetime, in our time together, we've seen waves of glory. Are you sensing that there were, and globally that we're getting ready to see a, another wave of glory? And what will that wave look like compared to maybe some of the past ones? Here, here's the way the Lord showed it to me. That's a real good question because something that I've seen that has been going on for the last year and a half is, see, Psalm 16 says there's a glory in each one of us. Hmm. And I feel like through familiarity, through our schedules, through everything that we have been great and good uh, and everything that we've made mistakes on, that there was some sort of shell that the Lord had to start breaking so this greater glory that's in us could come forth. It is something great that I'm seeing him starting to draw out of all of us. Doesn't matter our age. It, it really doesn't matter uh, what, what we've been through. There is a greater glory that's being drawn out. Now, I've watched it here. We have had about six weeks where you can see the glory coming wow. out of the people. And and backing away and watching it instead of trying to stick with everything that has been. I think anybody that watches it on the web can see it. Of course, we're not a church-run ministry. We're, we're a ministry, a worldwide prophetic apostolic ministry. But the gathering that we have, I'm sensing a glory being pulled out in that gathering that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, I remember some of the words going back to prophetic words about what was getting ready to happen for you and Global Spheres and, and Gloria Zion. And, you know, I want to say that many times as like there's different places that God is putting his finger on saying, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the way they're doing this here. I'm going to use the way they're doing this here that are developing models for these apostolic centers. And the church is in the apostolic center. Of course, we're, we're, we love the church. We go to church. You know what I mean? So we're not negating that. But it's so broad, our understanding. Uh, you want to say something about that part? I really think that was key. I think without you giving me that word and me submitting, I don't think we could have come into our next level of maturity here. And uh, I think you and Mike know me well enough to know that that has really never been my driving call is always been the nations, always been traveling, always been enjoying being with groups everywhere. And yet it was like the Lord said, but unless you submit, you won't be able to see the model that I'm bringing forth. Mm -hmm. I saw something else in January that's a good example of it, you know, because Texas went through that deep freeze, you know, uh, with, which Texas doesn't go through like that. Never in history had we gone no. through something like that. Well, you know how beautiful over the last eight years all the grounds here had developed and the Israel prayer garden. And that was another way I could see what God was doing in Israel. In that deep freeze, Pam had to redo everything. She had to see what didn't make it through mm -hmm. the last season, what did make it was, but was going to have to be nurtured in a new way. And what had to be brought in new and fresh. That's a good example of what we're all going through. Mm, yeah, I, I, and Pam is Chuck's wife, by the way, for some of you that didn't know that. Yeah, I, I think the thing that we're having to go back to over and over again is, do we trust God? Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. It's like, do we trust God that he's really working things for our good? You know, because when you're in the middle of shaking, are you trying to figure out your way? Okay, your life as you knew it is not the same. Things, the Lord changed the whole world. And even now there's a lot of suffering. So, but, but this is what I want to say. And I think we need to prophesy into this is 
God is taking you somewhere. You're not like a drift. God is not a deist that just created you and just spun you off and then whatever is going to happen. Your you're on your own. He doesn't leave us on our own. No, that is absolutely that. right. And what, what else is happening with it is I see through what we're going through, there's things in us that have never been fully redeemed and unlocked, right? Oh, you, you gave me a word so long ago. Remember, I would come over once a week and we would pray all day for nations mm -hmm. when you were in Weatherford that far back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you gave me a word. I remember Mike and I, we'd been in a circle praying and you said, You're, you, you guys gave me this leather jacket because my dad always wore a leather suede jacket. And you said, you're going to have to redeem what got taken from your dad. And Ooh, all I, remember. Sudden, I remember it so well. And Daniel wore that jacket till it fell apart. I, I wore it when I got too big to wear it. I gave it to Daniel to wear Aww. it. <laughs> we do get too big sometimes to wear last season. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but what I saw was, I saw, I saw how we filter seeing things from inside of us. And all of a sudden, I saw all the things my dad had done that had a redemptive characteristic about. It. Right. The Lord said, you're going to go back and you're going to redeem every one of these legally. Because he did a lot of illegal things. <laughs> and and I and that word started changing my life until today, even that there is a redemptive quality in each one of us that we have never allowed the Lord fully to shake loose. Mm, and I, I think that. that's part of that glory thing, Mike, you're talking mm -hmm. about as well. It is that redemptive quality in us that we have put a ceiling on or mm. put a box around or mm. we filter through our traumas mm. and uh, and I see God just saying listen it's time for me to raise up a people with strength with power that see things from a, a different perspective than they've ever seen it and I am ready for this army to start gathering this is what's so hard with the church right now because we're being gathered differently yeah. And the Lord would say to you, trust me in your timeline. For I have, oh, I feel such an, I have a timeline for you. And some of you were getting out of time. Some of you were not either progressing as quickly as you should have, or you ran ahead of me. Or you got on a wave of something that worked, but it wasn't my perfect will. It was my acceptable will. So the Lord said, I had to slow you down to get you on the timeline. Wow. And, and the Lord would also say, I am seeing that many of you have invested in things that were caught in other seasons. And I say, I am shaking loose your investments from past seasons in seeds that you have sown so that they start coming forth. I say, be careful. Don't look at them as you thought they would come forth, but look at how I bring them forth this season in Jesus. Mm -hmm. 